program change, we're going to actually have my brother give his best man speech now. Woo! Sorry, Wendy, we did not update you on that. <laughs> Well, as you just heard, I'm Josh's older brother, Mike. Some people say we resemble each other, but we're easy to tell apart. Josh wears glasses, and I'm the one with the normal amount of arm hair. <laughs> I apologize for having to read these notes. I thought about asking Josh and Dr. Raphael for some supplements to boost my memory, but I didn't want to bother them with shop talk while we're here at this amazing wedding. And it really is amazing. Thank you, Carol and Brad Walters, for all your efforts and attention to the hundreds of tiny details. It was clearly a labor of love preparing all this for us over the past weeks and months, and let's say decades, raising Erica into the beautiful woman who my brother has completely fallen head over heels in love with. And thanks also to our mom and dad, Linda and David Trud, for all your efforts and attention to detail over the past weeks and months and decades, raising my brother Josh into the rather average looking fellow <laughs> that Erica has nevertheless also fallen in love with. <laughs> Josh, as most of you know, is smart and funny and stylish and also sensitive and sincere and sentimental. And because of this, he's always had the ability to attract deeply devoted, true and lasting friendships. And this is why he came here with no fewer than eight groomsmen. Groomsmen's kind of a funny word. It sounds like we should all be standing around Josh brushing his hair, <laughs> eating moats. <laughs> Donnie, Ed, Justin, Michael, Todd, Billy, and Alan, all of them amazing men and dear close friends to Josh for many years. We all had the opportunity to really connect with each other at the bachelor party recently. And we became, as Alan said last night, in his incredibly funny and heartfelt toast, a fraternity. We became the truest sense of the word a fraternity of your groomsmen. Josh, as we stayed up all night telling stories and brushing each other's hair. <laughs> it was beautiful and special and I'll never forget it. <laughs> so with so many high caliber personalities here, I'm, I'm really honored and grateful and a little bit humbled that I'm the one standing here now talking to you on this amazing day in this room. A number of people asked me, well, <laughs> encouraged me really, to please just repeat Alan's amazing speech from last night. <laughs> and I had to think about it. I have a copy of it right here. <laughs> but as tempting as that is, Josh did ask me to share my own thoughts. And I think that decision for Josh must have been based at least in part on longevity. Because I've known Josh for nearly 45 years. And when I first met him, I wasn't immediately sure whether we'd hit it off. <laughs> There were some challenges to our friendship, real challenges. For one thing, I'm from the Northeast, and Josh was born in Virginia. So from the very beginning, there was a cultural divide. And I don't know whether it was the Southern accent, but for the first year or two that I knew Josh, I couldn't understand a single word that he said. So we had our differences at first, and really this was quite a long time ago, but back when we met, I, I was kind of independent, whereas Josh was still a bit of a mama's boy. <laughs> I was really getting into walking back then, and Josh couldn't even stand up on his own. And not to be petty, but Josh was much shorter than me. <laughs> Luckily that situation may have resolved itself. <laughs> Oh, one more thing, I think I mentioned this earlier. I have the normal amount of arm hair. <laughs> and 
Josh is distinguished by pillowy mounds of downy fur running on both of his forearms. It's almost bear-like. More on that topic later. But the point is we overcame our differences. And as we grew older, we grew closer. Sometimes I played the role of the big brother, like the time I protected Josh from the neighborhood bullies by dressing him in layers of heavily padded coats and sweaters so that he couldn't feel anything in case a fight were to break out. He was so he heavily padded that he could barely move his arms as he shuffled down the street, and the bullies took one look at him and cracked up laughing, and they did leave him alone and beat me up instead. True story, right? <laughs> But sometimes I would turn to Josh for advice. Several years ago, I called him to complain that my job was so boring. I don't know what to do, I told him. The stuff I'm working on is so tedious that I can't even keep my eyes open. Josh said, listen, here's what works for me at my job. When you're starting to lose focus, just take a look at the person closest to you and say to yourself, if I make any kind of mistake right now, this person dies. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but Josh, you're an emergency medicine doctor. That scenario is actually true for you. I'm just writing boring old technical manuals. There, no one's life is at risk. And it wasn't until a few years later when I got a job documenting equipment for the U.S. military that I was finally able to, to apply that advice. But it was about that time that Josh began the process of transitioning to his age management career and away from the life and death excitement of the emergency room. <coughs> Thankfully, this transition from one branch of medicine to another happened gradually, and Josh remained connected to emergency medicine long enough to meet Erica, who completely filled his world with a deeper appreciation of cartoon characters, <laughs> and also kindness and beauty and exquisite style and uninhibited laughter and sexiness and silliness, she very quickly became the absolute love of his life. And then his fiance, and now his bride. Now, you might know, you may have heard, that Josh and Erica have endearing nicknames for each other. Josh is? Yeah. <laughs> And Erica is? Oh. Right, so everyone knows this. And in some relationships, let's say most relationships, these cute, intimate terms of endearment would be private pillow talk. Tender words to be whispered to one another in a quiet moment. <laughs> While he stares into her eyes, and she gently runs her fingers through his arm hair. <laughs> But no, Josh and Erica are right out there in the open, publicly letting the whole world know, in animalistic terms, that their love is strong and savage. And waddles around in cute little orange feet, I guess. But I've never asked them where these names came from, because frankly, it's a highly personal thing that they share, or at least should be. <laughs> But I gave it some thought. Josh is the bear, for obvious reasons. Huge, tufty mounds of luxurious, bear-like arm hair. In fact, he travels with eight groomsmen to keep it looking neat. So no mystery there. But why a puffin? That's a a little less obvious. Yes, it's true that as birds go, the puffin is an exceptionally cute bird with adorable expressions and beautiful bright plumage. And certainly Erica does make some very cute expressions herself. And yes, she is beautiful and exceptionally gorgeous today. And if you look closely at her feet, you'll see that she actually does have some lovely plumage. Right? You're wearing the feather? But there has to be more to it than that. Some other shared characteristics, some puffin-like qualities that are meaningful in the context of their relationship. 
So I did a little research into puffin mating habits. <laughs> And I kept finding statements like, puffins are the most romantic and loving of all birds. And puffins are noted for their tenderness and their devotion to their mates. Which sounds a heck of a lot like gratuitous anthropomorphism. <laughs> Except that it's true. Kind of. Puffins enjoy a long lifespan, and when they mate, they mate for life. They sometimes spend months apart from each other at sea, which I guess is like working a long overnight shift. But they always return to the same mate when they come home to roost. They get back and immediately search for their mates, and then they're super excited to see each other and they kiss. Puffins engage in what's got to be the most, charmingly, the most charming mating display among all birds. They affectionately rub their bills together. This is called billing. No connection to doctors there. <laughs> And it looks exactly like kissing, and it's adorable. And all this beak-on-beak -beak action causes their bills to wear down over time, but puffin bills magically regenerate so they can continue kissing their one and only mate throughout their lifetime. And puffin mates do everything together. Besides being ridiculously cute and affectionate and having fun waddling through life together, the male and females take turns getting food for the family, both sexes take turns sitting on the eggs and watching the children. And they also share the process of building their nest together. Both mates fly around together looking for just the right bits of fluff to make their home cozy and functional and perfect for them. And of course, this is exactly the process that Josh and Erica are going through right now. For those of you who don't know, Josh and Erica have an enormous house with rambling hallways and lots of extra rooms to get lost in. Now, of course they don't. They live in a typically compact New York City apartment. You know the famous Dorothy Parker quote? It's a small apartment. I have barely enough room to lay my hat and a few friends. It's like that. So Josh and Erica are exquisitely decorating their, their nest together with beautiful bits of fluff. And while they're doing that, they're also dealing with the challenges of living in a very compact space by installing clever items of furniture that transform into other clever items. <laughs> These are marvels of engineering. There's a brilliantly designed series of ladders and semi-stairwells that magically transforms what's essentially a one-room apartment into a super cool and stylish three-story home. And there's the magic desk that with one touch of a finger rises up into the heavens and transforms into a comfortable guest bed. And then there's the new set of premium, professional quality, all clad pots and pans that will magically transform Erica and Josh into people who know how to cook. <laughs> Josh, Erica, with all this magic and transformation going on around you every day, I'm sure you won't have any trouble noticing and appreciating all the small moments of magic that you guys are creating yourselves as your playful, loving, and endlessly cute relationship blossoms, and blossoms into the next phase of marriage and even deeper commitment and wonderful new adventures and discoveries. Let me close with a quote from one of your favorite movies. No, it's not, we're gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> It's a quote from a recent film that you both loved and me, Gabby, and me watch, Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> I don't need to live in a castle. I'm already happy. I got the coolest friend in the world. You both now have the coolest friend in the whole world sharing your nest and making it your castle. And you have all of us who love you very much and wish you all the best things that life has to offer for many, many years to come. Will everyone please now raise your glass, if you have one, and join me in toasting Erica and Josh, Dr. Puffin and Dr. Bear, if possible. <laughs>